let's do another one. Now, when I went to college, this is the contradiction that my college professor hit me with the first day of school. It was logic and critical thinking class. And my professor, he, uh, he said, raise your, uh, we'll go around, tell us your guys' names, tell us your name, and then tell us something about yourself. Now, and I'm a believer, so I'm, of course, I'm thinking, I know my name and I'm a Christian, like that's what I'm gonna say. So he, he, he gets to me and I said, my name's Mike, I'm a Christian. And he goes, I have a question for you. My college professor, who probably had read the Bible more than I had at, the t at that point in time, or at least read about things about the Bible, one or the other. And he says to me, how is it that Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 have two contradictory accounts of creation? And I was like, wait, Genesis 1 and 2, what does it say? I mean, I'm just a kid. I don't know. I, I've read it, but I mean, I don't have it like loaded in the back of my head at that moment. Well, Genesis 1, it says that the trees are made on day three, right? And then six day creation on day six, animals, and then Adam and Eve. Finally, last man is made. Genesis 2 says something, according to my professor, a little different. It says that God makes Adam then he makes a garden and he puts trees and stuff in it. So trees come after Adam. Then he makes beasts of the field and he shows them to Adam. And then finally, after all that, then he makes Eve. And so he said, these are two contradictory accounts. And so I didn't have any resources back then. The internet was not well known, right? Because I'm not that young, as young as that anyway. And so the, you couldn't go and Google it and be like, somebody help. <laughs> I just like went home and I read the Bible. And I read Genesis 1 and 2, and I thought, wait a minute. And here's what we discover, the solution. These are complementary passages. Genesis 1 is a general account of God creating all things on the last day he created man, right? Genesis 2 is a more detailed account of day 6. It's specifically talking about day 6. And what God makes in day 6 is not a... a uh, an undoing or a redoing of what he did in the previous days. It goes like this. The trees and animals made on day six in the garden were merely examples of the stuff he had already made earlier in the creation week. So, and we can prove this. This is, this is absolutely clear. Um, there are examples for Adam and only certain samples were made of the trees. Only the trees that would bear fruit were put in the garden. It wasn't every kind of tree on the planet Earth. It was a specifically a really nice garden to hang out in, a bunch of fruit trees. The beasts were there. It was only the beasts of the field. It wasn't every cre creature that crawls on the Earth. I mean, he made everything in the earlier times, and then he made samples of certain things to show Adam in the garden. These are two complementary accounts that are really not contradictory. As I said, the trees that produce fruit. I brought this to my college professor. And I said, uh, and I waited till after class. And I came up to him, I, uh, Dr. Uh, Groover, I think, if I remember his name correctly, it's been a little while. And I said, Dr. Groover, I said, hey, can I talk to you after class? You know, I said, I got my Bible there and I opened it to Genesis 1 and 2. And I'm like, I'm just going to walk him through it. You know, he, he didn't, he just didn't know. He just didn't know. And I'm, I want to help him know. And I don't want to embarrass him, you know, because he was like wrong about the Bible. That's kind of embarrassing. So I go to him and I'm like, Dr. Groover, can, can I show you this? And so Genesis 1 is actually the da, da da And I explained to him what I had to explain to you. And I showed it to him. And he looks at me and he goes, I knew that. I just, I just wanted to challenge you. What a jerk. <laughs> you didn't want to challenge me. You wanted me not to look it up. You wanted me to think that the Bible had contradictions that you didn't even think it had. This happens all the time. It happens all the time. Where contradictions, it ends, that's why it becomes quantity over quality, because you start chasing these things down, and every time you chase one down and it ends up not being a contradiction, you lose any belief that there are contradictions. You start to go, ah, pfft. and so what do we have to do? We have to chase them down. So over the uh, the next few, uh, pro well, at least next time, and maybe even after that, I'm going to be dealing with supposed contradictions in the Bible. I don't think that we've done enough so far to feel like we've covered. And there are some where I'm not sure how to resolve them. And I want to present those to you so you understand where they are, because I think that we should be an informed people. And I'm not afraid of having a question mark at the end of a sentence when it comes to things like that, because I believe based on prophecy, based on the transformation of, of my own life, 
through Jesus Christ based on the worldview of Christianity being the only plausible worldview that I've ever heard based on, you name it, you know, all these various facts that support the scriptures that a, a, uh, a question mark at the end of a sentence isn't going to then undo all of those things because that would just be even more confusing. <laughs> Boy, if the Bible's not God's word, then how did it get accurate prophecy detailed hundreds and hundreds of years in advance? Like explain that to me. Um, yeah. So we'll be getting into that over the next few weeks. Um, and if there's any particular contradictions, you guys have experienced someone bringing up to you supposed contradictions and you're like, I don't really know how to handle it. Please shoot it over to me and I may well include it in the, uh, in the process. So do you guys have any questions? Any questions? It's a shorter night tonight because I've just been really busy the last few weeks. So I didn't uh, plan as much for my own sanity.